Okay, I found my grandfather's headstone, Sam Scola, Sam Hawk Scola. He died in 1933. Um, and this is where he's buried at. And my grandmother's buried in another cemetery. And at some point in time, I'd like to have them buried side by side. My grandfather died in 1933 in a uh, shootout with uh, Sheriff Bash here. And uh, he was killed. Uh, some say he was set up. He was trying to get out of the mob and uh, didn't go very well. He was uh, Johnny Lazzie's right-hand guy, one of them. And he, uh, Johnny Lazzie worked for Tom Pendergast. And the likes of Pretty Boy Foy, Machine Gun Kelly, uh, when he would come through uh, the Midwest, they had a permission. They would talk to my grandfather to get that. This little angel up here, it's made out of marble. It's uh, wings have fallen off. Somebody's been putting um, flowers on his tombstone. I haven't been here a long time. I, whoever's done that, I, I want you to know I appreciate that. But here's a... Uh, here he is. Husband Sam Scola, born 1909, died 1933. He left my mother uh, orphaned at six months old and my, my grandmother widowed. And... Um, wasn't a good thing, but they worked through it. My Uncle Dominic Scola, he died in a still fire. He was in bootlegging also back during the Prohibition era. He died in 1931. Um, in one of my grandfather's stills, uh, it, it blew up. I believe it was down in North End. And in the process of it, a guy named, by the name of uh, John Borsa, and it says Pal, he went in to get my my uncle Dominic Scola out of the still fire and uh, he died in the process of it. And my grandfather, Sam Scola, made sure that he had arrangements and taken care of because John didn't have a lot of money and they took care of each other back then. And this is uh, my great grandmother Mary Scola, 1878 to 1959. She died the year I was born. And her husband Paul Scola, 1872 to 1949. Again, this is just a little slice of uh, some, of my, some of my history, where I come from, my story, that I want to share with you, and there'll be more coming. Uh, I can't tell you that my grandmother never remarried in all the years. She talked about my grandfather like he was still alive. She was madly in love with this man, and uh, he was good to her, and he was good to people that were around him. Uh, he wasn't so good to people that... that uh, <laughs> they crossed him, but he was uh, uh, a stand-up guy. Unfortunately, he died. Uh, he was in his 20s. It wasn't a, um, a long life he had, but it was an eventful life he had. And they say, you live by the gun, you die by the gun, and that's what happened here. Unfortunately, there was a lot of speculation about different things. You hear stories about uh, the Union Station Massacre back in the... Uh, uh, when the FBI was formed and my grandfather's name comes up just because at that period of time he had to deal with some of the boneheads that were involved with that and uh, there's stories and I have stories I have all of his bootlegging books with their names <laughs> and the amounts of stuff they bought but they're all dead now so I can talk about it and if they were alive I wouldn't because I respect uh, these guys try to do what they could to make a living and, um, you know, that old adage of you know, they die and they stick together, and that didn't happen here. My grandmother took care of herself. My grandfather, Pasatino, took care of her. Um, my grandfather was owed a whole lot of money, and nobody came up with anything. He left my grandmother a buck. She talked about that dollar till the day she died. Well, not literally, but, you know, until it came close. And I found that dollar in her safety deposit box, and on it was a little purse. It looked like a little change purse, and written in her handwriting, it said, Sam left. I opened it up, and there was a dollar, one dollar. Now, he left her trappings, um, and unfortunately, we only have a few of those left, um, and that's a, uh, it's another story. But we have a lot of interesting stuff left, and we'll continue the story later. Uh, thanks for listening.